And of course, in habits is discipline. It takes discipline to do that. It takes discipline to put your phone on do not disturb when you know you've got important stuff coming in. You maybe have somebody that needs you and needs to contact you, but you have to set boundaries. You also have to have discipline to do that. So you just include discipline in your routines. Hey, Kathy Owen here, certified fitness trainer and mindset coach since 2002, transforming lives in what appears to be magic fashion using Stop the Mind Screw process. Today, we're tackling another false belief, and that is I can't focus. Too many distractions going on. We've all been there. Here's my recent story on that. Instagram is my favorite app. It's my favorite app for all kinds of reasons, but it also causes me to lose my focus. It causes me to get distracted so easily. I understand ADHD, lack of attention span, all of those things because of Instagram. I recently signed up for a new coach a few months ago. And when I signed up for this coach, I made a big investment in my business. And I also had other coaches reaching out to me on Instagram because of my business and because of my site. It's like they're all they're they're fishing. They're fishing. They're fishing. I get it. But they were distracting me because I was like, oh my God, that sounds good. That sounds good. And because I signed up with this coach, my advertisements were also coming in because they targeted me as one of their prospects. So I was seeing advertisements for really awesome coaches, including my coach herself. She had other programs she was selling and they were targeting me because I signed up with her for that. And I get it. That's business. But it was so freaking distracting. So how did I encounter that? And what did I do with Stop the Mind Screw? Step number one, what do you want? What exactly do you want? I wanted peace. I wanted focus. I wanted 100% laser focused on my goals. So I wrote down my goals, wrote them down in clear plain sight so I could see them several times a day and also definite chief aim, just like Napoleon Hill teaches in Think and Grow Rich. I have a free resource for you on kathyowen.com backslash want that helps you identify this. But I do this for everything. This is step number one and stop the mind screw. And anytime you have a problem, you want to come across this. Part of step number one is identifying your core values. And I have several core values. You've heard me talk about them many times. You can go look at them on my front page of my website. They're right there in plain sight. And of course, number one is have a positive mindset. And I knew I had to work on that. But another core value that came into mind with this particular situation was boundaries. What are boundaries? Well, in this particular situation, a boundary was setting things on my own self to limit me from being distracted. This means protecting my queendom. I'm protecting myself from all of these distractions. I knew they were hitting me. So what did I do? I set boundaries. I set time limits. I set do not disturbs on myself. I also used another thing further down the line that we're going to talk about, and that is discipline. Step number two, I went on a mental diet. I identified those negative thoughts and I didn't dwell on them. Because what happens, especially in this situation, when you think you can't focus, that's a limiting belief. You identify these limiting beliefs through a mental diet and you let them go. You also rewrite them, which we'll talk about in step number five. My negative thoughts in this were comparisons. I had a lot of comparison-itis going on like you do see in social media. I was comparing my coach to this other coach. I was doubting my decisions that I made. I was doubting this. I was going, oh my God, she's got this and hey, she doesn't. And what am I going to do? Da, 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 da. I was doubting myself. I was having a lot of self-doubt, which was causing me to lose focus. Basically, I was giving my power away. 
Stop the mind screw helps with that. Number three, I went into self-talk. How was I talking to myself? I was doubting my decisions that I made and I knew that was not empowering. Also what happened, and I talk about this in step number three a lot, is pendulums. Pendulums is a term from reality transurfing, which is just a thought that everybody else is thinking. It's like dogma. It's like an, a sports team, a political party. Advertising is a big pendulum. And the pendulum that was trying to get my energy were these ads that were coming up in my feed. I had to become aware of my self-talk as well, and I had to rewrite it, which we'll talk about in step number five. But before we go there, let's go to step number four. Step number four is habits. Thought habits. One of my big things is from the book, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, and that is be 1% better today than yesterday. I had to sit there and talk to myself and say, hey, who am I racing? Who am I comparing myself to? It's only me. And I only need to be 1% better today than yesterday. I took a lot of stuff off of my shoulders with that one thought. In my habits is all my routines. My routines I really, really fall back on when I hit a speed bump. Your routines are what hold you together because you can easily go back to that and get in the right state of mind. State of mind is something that Neville Goddard teaches. It's all in Stop the Mind Screw. I'm All I'm striving to do is get in a better state of mind. That's it. My routines solve that. One of my best routines that helped with this was in the evenings. I only relaxed and I unwound. I just let go. I didn't do any business. I didn't look at my phone. I didn't do any of that. I just relaxed and watched TV, had a few cocktails, and just unwound. And it just took a whole lot of pressure off of me because also, you need to take some time away from social media, especially if it's part of your business, because it can overtake you. And of course, in habits is discipline. It takes discipline to do that. It takes discipline to put your phone on do not disturb when you know you've got important stuff coming in. You maybe have somebody that needs you and needs to contact you, but you have to set boundaries. You also have to have discipline to do that. So you just include discipline in your routines and discipline in your day. Discipline is an important part of your habits. Number five, revision and healing. Remember in step number two where you go on a mental diet and you have these negative thoughts? I encourage you to write those down. Because when we get to step number five, we want to revise them and transform that thought. The Pruning Shears of Revision, the link in the description below, is all revision is. You want to rewrite those thoughts because they, they empower you when you rewrite them in a more powerful way. Remember how I said it, the 1% better today than yesterday in my habits? Part of that was revision. Part of that came from revision. I rewrote that in, who am I comparing myself to? Who am I racing? And why am I trying to win today on something that is, I'm in it for a long haul? Which leads me to step number six, which is get in flow, get in the zone. The journey and the destination are one. And when you know that, you don't freak out and go, oh my God, I've got to win this race today. I've got to do all of this today. Focus takes a positive state of mind. And if you're not there, you're not going to be able to focus. You're not going to be in the zone. But guess what? When you are in the zone, you are focused. One thing I love about being in the zone, and I remind myself of this, especially when I get overwhelmed, is synchronicities are going on all the time. They're going on all the time. And you miss them when you're not paying attention, when you're not in the zone. 
When you're listening to your higher self, what you do in step number five, because you're going into revision and healing, you get in touch with your higher self. And when you get in touch with your higher self, you see those synchronicities. You see what's going on and you pick up on them. For example, I had this one coach that was ticking me off and he, he came, I even got on a call with him and he was like cutting me down basically. And he was telling me I needed to charge a high dollar for my in one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that would make me happy. And I'm like, so what he cut me down on was, he goes, um, how many people do you have watching your videos? How many hits do you have on your website? Look, you only have so many followers on your Instagram. So you're good. the numbers are not there for you, is basically what he was telling me. And yeah, he's right. But I know in my heart that my message is out there for more than just one-on-one -on -one coaching. I know I have something very powerful to teach. If I would have listened to him and stayed stuck in my little, poor little loss of focus self, I would have been in a bad spot. But what happened was I listened to my higher self. I immediately got off the phone with him. I said, I'm not resonating with you. This, this doesn't vibe. I said, I'm, well, you're wasting my time. I'm wasting yours. Talk to you later. Click. Unfollowed him. Just got him out of my feed. And when I did that, I realized something really powerful. I said, I have got to focus on one person, one coaching, one method at a time. And when, since I did that, Things have transformed in what appears to be magic fashion. And I got my power back because I didn't care what he said. I did not care. I don't care if I reach one person with my message, which is free. I am pumped. And I already know I do that. So I'm pumped. I don't, don't need his validation. And I don't need all those dollars that he thinks that I was going to try to charge somebody for it. It's going to come because the synchronicities have already started happening and I see them all the time. In step number six, we remember we have to be persistent. You have to stick to it. You can't let discouragement come in and get to you. You're gonna get discouraged. You're gonna hit speed bumps. But when you follow Stop the Mind Screw process, those discouragements go away like that because when you hit a discouragement, you can go through all the steps right there and easily dissolve it. It's also going to take consistency. You've got to stay stuck on what you want. Go back to step number one. Look at that. What do you want? Write it in detail so you can really look at that because when you really look at that and it's in detail with all five senses, you can easily pull yourself back into that picture. And when you pull yourself back into that picture, you're going to stay consistent and persistent which is flow. All right, that's my video for today. I hope you liked it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it with somebody who might benefit from this. And if you do give it a thumbs up, it helps tell YouTube, hey, we need to get this video out to more people. Peace out and namaste. Pew. Thought habits. You know, one of my big things is from the book. And healing. Remember in step number one, when you have, or. Remember All right, that's my video for today. I hope you liked it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. It helps in the. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did, because it helps YouTube, know this video is good. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did because it helps to tell YouTube that this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did, share it with somebody who could like it. That tells YouTube that this video needs to be out there for someone else. All right, have a great day. Mm -hmm.